do you want to go to heaven? I want to, this morning, I want to do something a little different. But let's first, let me read the text. Revelation, the 21st chapter. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Bible. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was gone, and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every fear from their eyes, every tear, and there will be no more death, sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And he said to me, Write, for this is what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he said also, I am finished. It is finished. I am the Omega and the Alpha, the beginning and the end. To all that are thirsty, I give freely from the spring of water of life. All who are victorious will inherit these blessings, and I will be their God, and they shall be my children. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, as we approach this, this topic about heaven, it is our prayer that you will open our minds, our hearts, for a yearning to be in that holy city it is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Today I want to do something a little different, and that is I want to go to have our divine imaginations view what it's going to be like. Now I know that that it says, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man which God has prepared for those. So I know that it's not going to be anywhere near what it's going to be like. But I want to be excited about what is going to come for us. So let's go to the last scenes. And there we're traveling and along the free, freeways or our streets and we look up and we see this bright bright, bright thing coming at us. Why, it is, it is coming larger and larger. Everybody is stopping. The freeways are stopping. The TV cameras are focused. It is, it is the most incredible sight you ever saw. All these angels and Jesus is coming. And as we look around, we see people starting to pop out of the graves. People popping out, but not they're not popping out decrepit and old, but completely changed. Completely changed, different. And people starting to rise up. Now I imagine there are some people who think that they can work their way to heaven and they're trying to flap their wings. And they're trying to flap, but it's not happening. Jesus is coming. And as we get caught up, we start to rise in the air and we go past the moon. We go past the space station. We go past and we start moving toward this, past these constellations. We are moving at a breakneck speed and we're traveling toward that heavy, holy city. By and by, we see this bright light, and as we get closer and closer, it is the holy city. It is huge, humongous. It is, it is, here it is, gets bigger and bigger. Now, if you know that the, if you can see, um, imagine, we have, this city is a hundred, is 1,400 to 1,500 miles across. Just give you a, uh, an idea of how far that is. It's from Shreveport to San Diego. 
or if you want to go another way from Freeport to Montana, that's about 1,500 miles. That's a, that's a big city. But it's not only a, a, in square, but it's also, it's tall. It's like this huge square sitting on the top of the earth. That's how big this, this holy city is. And it's got this, as we get closer and closer, we see the, the, the stones that are, that are 12 different stones, brightly shining. And as we look, look, the gates are opening up. It's a pearl. One pearl. Have you ever seen anything that big? A pearl. And as we go in, we hear the most incredible singing. The angels are singing a welcome home. My mind goes to the what uh, Psalms, the 24th chapter says, open ye ancient gates, open ye ancient doors, let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ye ancient gates and let the king of glory enter. And who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of glory. As we go in, we look at, and sure enough, as we've always been told, streets of gold. Now, two things just kind of hit me when I think about streets of gold. One, it says it's transparent. Have you ever seen transparent gold? I've never seen it. But it's used for pavement. In fact, stones, gold, silver, all that is used for pavement, building material. So it, it comes to my mind is what is important to God? God, it's not material things that we think of. What's important to God is a character. A character that's changed but into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's important to God. That's what's invaluable. And as we, as, you know, God values us changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. As we go into the city, it is in my mind, oops, sorry, it is in my mind we see a long communion table. And as people get gather along the, the sides of the table, we have Jesus at the head. But what's amazing is because we have immortal bodies, we can look at the end just like eyes of an eagle and see people all the way down and we can recognize people. Jesus is, is thirsty. He's hungry. He hasn't had communion with his people in a long time. Over to the left, the tree of life. Huge tree. And as we know that it produces the, the fruits, one new fruit every month. Avocados. Plums, peaches, cherries. And they're not just little things. I can imagine a cherry being about this big. Maybe a, a peach this big. Avocados this big. <laughs> My wife loves avocados, so, you know. Got to put that one in. Mangoes. Durian. No, I don't think durian's going to be there. Um, so we got all this, this huge fruit, and it's so luscious. It is the best tasting fruit you've ever thought of. Underneath the tree of life, going right through it, is the water of life, crystal clear. Anybody drinks that? Anybody eats of the fruit? 
of this tree is life. I imagine that it's probably been transplanted from the Garden of Eden right there in heaven. You know, the things that excite me about going to heaven is not the tree. Fun as it is. It's not the river of life. As exciting as that is. It's not seeing transparent gold or pearls. It's no more sin. And no more death. And no more sorrow. And no more tears. You know, I know that we think of what we would like, but what does God want? It's to have no more sorrow in his world. As I get, you know, I get very tired of going to funerals. I get tired of watching little kids die of tumors and cancer. I get tired of, of, of pain and sorrow of having to tell somebody that your loved one didn't make it. I am tired of that. And I want it to end. And I'm looking forward to that time when it's no more. No more of, of pain and sorrow and sadness. If I'm tired of it, what does God think? A preacher had this list. Bear with me, it's a long one. No more adversity, aggravation, agitation, annoyance, athlete's feet, adultery, abortion, AIDS, no more bunions, baldness, backache, bitterness, broken bones, broken homes, bad business meetings, no more cancer, cemeteries, confusion, crime, cussing, complaining, car wrecks, crutches, no more divorce, dope, deceit, dandruff, disappointments, death, no more devil, no more evil, enemies, earwax, eyeglasses, no more funerals, false teeth, fads, fears, feelings, fighting, fussing, feuding, no more fault finding, no more garbage, no more gout, no more goodbyes, no more griping, no more guilt, no more gore, and the list goes on. You get the point. No more sin. No more sadness. But what is important about heaven is to be with Jesus. To be with Jesus. To, to come up to him and worship him for what he did for us. It's be with Jesus and to feel the the scars in his hands, the scars in his side, the scar in his feet. It's to be with Jesus and say, how come? To have personal time with the Savior of the universe, that's heaven. To be able to, to walk with him and talk with him on an intimate, personal basis. Last week I had a birthday. Can you imagine what it's like to live forever? Eternal. Eternity. You have eternity to think about heaven. I mean, think about where we are and what we're doing. If you have eternity to, to ask, see people, to say, not have to say goodbye. Eternity. I can think of next week, I, maybe tomorrow or the next day or next week. What, if it, what is it going to be like to never die? Can you fathom that in your mind? You see, I'm excited for heaven. But what about you? What are you looking for when you go to heaven? What do you want to see? What do you want to do? Tell me. Here's a microphone. 
or you can just stand up, what is heaven going to be like for you? Absolutely. Yeah. to go to different planets that never fell and talk to people that we that inhabit this whole universe. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome to, to not to have to study for a test. <laughs> Anybody else? What is heaven going to be like? Can you imagine going up and meeting Adam or Elijah or Moses? What about Samson or David, Abraham, Paul? What about meeting your guardian angel and to say how many, and have a discussion of how many times he saved you? For me, we'd be there all week. The Sabbath, coming together on the Sabbath day, everybody to come to God and worship our gardens, our animals, as you said. What about flying? How are we going to fly? Marriage, are we going to be there? Yes or no? That's an ongoing discussion. There will be three surprises in heaven. Surprise number one, those who made it. Surprise number two, those who did not make it. Surprise number three, that I made it. You know, I can only say that heaven is going to be cheap enough. You know, I was looking at the scriptures. Let me read you some. Isaiah the 11th chapter, verses 6 and 9 says, In that day the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and the little child will lead them. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will be lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. I gotta see that. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put his hand in the nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. Isaiah, the, that was Isaiah 11. Isaiah 25 says, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. 
The Lord has spoken. In that day, the people will proclaim, this is our God. We trusted him and he saved us. This is the Lord whom we trusted. Let us rejoice in the salvation he brings. John 14, you can say it with me. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house is many mansions. For if it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. The Bible says, that, lo, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. My reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. Let each who hears him say, come. Let the thirsty ones come. Anyone who wants to, come. Let's come and drink the water of life without charge. I want to be there. I want to see you there. No more having to say goodbye. That will be heavenly. God be with you.